Anna from Hungary. And she is quoting from Asadiwar, Guru Granth Sahib. From woman, man is born. Within woman, man is conceived. To woman, he is engaged and married. Woman becomes his friend. Through woman, the future generations come. When his woman dies, he seeks another woman. To woman, he is bound. So why call her bad? From her, kings are born. From woman, woman is born. Without woman, there would be no one at all. O Nanak, only the true Lord is without a woman. Acharya ji, who is calling the woman bad in the first place? I didn't get why the question. So why call her bad was posed at all. Thank you for the guidance. With gratitude, Anna Hungary. Uh, there are two classes of people who call the woman as bad, Anna. On one hand are the male supremacists, the misogynists. Who have this notion that one gender is superior than the other. And then there are the spiritualists who talk not of the physical woman but Prakriti. And they say Prakriti or Maya or Avidya are the root cause of man's bondage. So Baba Nanak is addressing both these people. He's saying that you who talk ill of the woman are not at all separate from the woman. You come out of the flesh of the woman and all your life you remain attached to the woman in many ways. Even when you say that you are a God seeker or truth lover, who are you without the woman? Would you exist to love the truth or seek God? And this operates at both levels. Each of his utterances operates at both the levels. At the level of those who despise the physical woman and at the level of those who despise Prakriti. So he is addressing both the commoner who believes in male supremacy, the MCP as you know him, and the Pandit, the spiritualist who keeps on cursing Prakriti. Nanak Sahib is talking to both of them. And each of his sentences is addressed to both of them and therefore has two meanings. To the commoner he is saying, aren't you a big hypocrite that you keep cursing the woman? If the woman goes away from your life, you would not take two months to bring another woman into your life. Such is your dependence on the woman. You keep lording over her. And Anna, remember that when we say that Baba Nanak is addressing the commoner, do not forget the context. He is talking 
to the peasants of Punjab. Hmm? He is talking to the people of Punjab as they were 700 years back. That's the context. Hmm? So he is saying, if the woman goes away for a while, then it is you who become desperate for her. She may or may not miss you so much, but what is certain is that you start longing for her, pining for her rather. So what is this double speak? On one hand, you cannot live without her. On the other hand, look at your actions. The woman does not need four husbands, but the husband often needs four wives. So which gender is more in need of the other? The woman is able to do with a quarter of a husband. But the woman is, but the man is wanting four wives. So the man needs the woman 16 times more. Is that not so? And still you act as if the woman is a curse on you. He's just Exposing the double standards of the common male. From woman man is born, within woman man is conceived, to woman he is engaged and married. Look at her preponderance. Look at her sheer importance. Who are you without her? In fact, you are not even a little without her. Without her, you are just not. And he's addressing the common man. So he's addressing the common man whose body identified. Where does the body come from? The woman. Woman becomes his friend through woman. The future generations come. Is that not what you want? You want a son. From where would the son come? Even the son has to come from the woman. You might keep with the entire world the entire day. But when you retire to your home, in the night, it is to the woman that you talk and share. When his woman dies, he seeks another woman. And that is what has been happening in India in general, probably the entire world. If the man dies, the woman may or may not feel a deep urge to remarry and get another partner. But experience has been that man more definitely does get another partner when the woman dies. And this demonstrates who needs the other the more. From her kings are born, even the greatest one who achieved liberation came from her, didn't he? The child starts off just as a body, be it Christ or Krishna, Ram or Buddha, Ashtavakra Shankaracharya, all started off as just babies oh, and babies are babies. They all puke and cry, don't they? Hmm? And they all get measles. Babies are babies. From where did that baby come? Who nursed that baby? The woman.
from woman woman is born the utter genius of the sage hmm? there is nobody who is not attached to prakriti it says that sometimes you may like one kind of prakriti and not another kind but that aspect of prakriti that you like and are attached to that too comes from mother prakriti which means prakriti in its wholeness has to be accepted and even respected without woman there would be no one at all o oh, nanak only the true lord is without a woman there is prakriti there is purush and there is parmatma to all who are body identified prakriti is the companion hmm? who is body identified the purush what is the body prakriti i am the body when you say so then i is the purush body is the prakriti and when you give up the body identification then only the one great i remains and that is parmatma but that is only for those who have given a body identification as long as you live as the body you have no right to curse the body the woman or prakriti if you claim to be beyond woman then ask yourself are you one with parmatma o oh, nanak only the true lord is without a woman mind you only the true lord are you the true lord are you one with the true lord if you are not one with the true lord why do you speak ill of women that would be hypocrisy on one hand you are so dependent on women on the other hand you curse them or speak ill of them which also means that the more you are attached to women the more will be your distance from the true lord at the same time the one who goes to the true lord cannot come without a woman so it's complex mm. without woman there is no journey to truth and on the journey to truth you create woman as an obstacle who would journey to the truth if there were no women and women here stands at two levels right the physical woman and prakriti in general who would journey to the truth can there be purush without prakriti no they are parts of the same duality without prakriti there would be no purush to long for parmatma at the same time if the purush gets lost in prakriti he never meets parmatma but if you get lost in prakriti is it prakriti's fault did she tell you to get drunk and rape her she exists with you she doesn't exist to become an obstacle for you if you are then she is now how do you denounce her and if you find her becoming an obstacle then what right do you have to condemn her condemn yourself instead you are not careful enough in your relationship with her
she is not merely a necessity she is your physical progenitor she is where you physically come from she is the physicality prakriti and without your physicality who are you to seek liberation all this bliss that you talk of in the spiritual process to whom would it come without your physical self what bliss have you experienced sans your physical self and physical self is needed even to be liberated then shouldn't you rather thank prakriti for liberation only somebody who is very honest about liberation can utter these words others are neither liberated and not even sincere about being liberated so they blame their bondage upon prakriti rather than themselves they would say oh what to do my body is like this oh what to do i am genetically not equipped to be liberated the woman is being blamed woman is the body woman is the prakriti oh what to do i am a lady so i get a little carried away by hormonal emotionality that's the kind of arguments that insincere people come up with whenever you find somebody blaming his or her body or conditioning for his various shortcomings and bondages see that prakriti is being blamed and if prakriti is being blamed then you must remember these words of guru sahab again and again do not blame her she is your necessary companion she is your necessary companion now if you turn her into an enemy that is your decision your journey to liberation would necessarily be along with her now it depends on you how you use her in your journey to the truth can you journey to the truth bodilessly so your journey to the truth would necessarily be along with her it depends on you how you use her she can be a very good friend or she can be the biggest obstacle you can get in either case you are responsible that is the reason why in the scriptures prakriti is never addressed she is never taught anything the purush is taught have you seen that because prakriti is anyway not doing anything she is just a companion the purush does what he does so the responsibility lies squarely on purush if you are nice with her she will be your best friend and if you find her going crazy with you ask yourself what is it that you did to make her crazy i am not addressing merely the physical males i am also addressing the physical females right if you find yourself going crazy which means 
your hormonal and and and, and impulses and thoughts and feelings they are all just going wild and astray then ask yourself what did i do to get my thoughts and emotions and hormones into such such a squalor they do not do anything on your own have i not been teaching this since this since long when something arises it depends on you whether you support it or ignore it thought might arise feelings might arise but why do you start supporting them why do you start energizing them so you must see why the purush is being constantly addressed because if things go wrong the fault lies squarely with the purush never with prakriti she is what she is she is the universe she is the material she is all that exists you are the one who does something with all that exists you are the one who establishes a particular kind of relationship with the universe so you have to answer why did things go wrong the universe is passive in itself prakriti too is passive in the entire game the woman remains passive so if the activity goes wrong the question would certainly be asked to the actor not to the one who is passive you were talking about purush prakriti and paramatma so the purpose of purush is to be over prakriti and merge into paramatma or to know paramatma as much i could understand purush likes prakriti and loves paramatma purush likes prakriti and loves paramatma but he thinks liking is loving so he says i love you to prakriti so acharya ji the other animals the lower animals the lower animals lower animals what do you mean uh, by that exactly? uh, means lower to uh, also hum <laughs> humans just said lower animal humans as they do not have the consciousness to be self aware and uh, to have a, a concept of self and an individual they do not have this consciousness to the prakriti if we understand evolution the prakriti itself has given the leverage to the, to humans to be self aware and to be conscious and to see prakriti different uh, means prakriti has given the leverage to humans to see itself the saints would say prakriti has given birth to purush in her effort to reach parmatma prakriti wants to reach parmatma through purush but purush is so mad that he thinks that prakriti is an obstacle it's like mother giving birth to the baby and the baby is trying to gain liberation and in his effort to gain liberation he thinks that the mother is an obstacle why the mother doesn't know her because the mother herself is a baby mother too is both the son and the mother right prakriti and purush exist within both the male and the female so the mother is on the same path as the son but as the saints have known the parmatma then prakriti has known the parmatma yes through them why then it, it has to happen it doesn't have to happen there is a choice you make the same choices as the as the saints did and then things will be different so so then if the if the prakriti has known the parmatma then the the misstep that this consciousness given to this one animal called human to be self aware then why it hasn't been taken away by whom prakriti 
Why will Prakriti take anything away or not take anything away? She is a non-doer. But through evolution, we see we see that this consciousness has been given to humans by Prakriti itself. It is not being given to humans by Prakriti. Consciousness itself is Prakriti. It's just that consciousness lives in the illusion that it is separate from Prakriti. Semi-separate. What consciousness is there without the brain? Then why it has kept other animals to be devoid of that consciousness? And that is a thought in your consciousness. Is that a thought in the animal's consciousness? They don't have it. How do you know? And they don't know how to be self -aware. How do you know? So, Acharya, when, when will Prakriti be completely know it and when there will be... Maybe around 33 years later. <laughs> what kind of question is this? <laughs> when will we have the next lunar eclipse? Hmm? Are these pattern based things? One more question. Uh, we use the word Brahma and Par Brahma, the absolute Brahma, and we use the word Atma and Paramatma. All four are one. All four are one. And the Brahma we talk about the one who keeps the thing. You know, uh, uh, who who has made the universe that Brahma is different from it's in mind it's brain Brahma is for the Pandit. Brahma is for the Gyani. Hmm?